Emerald Highlands, we are coming for you. Bah. Okay, so today's video will be a rather informative video. If you have never been to Cameron Highlands, this video is a must. As always, you will find timestamps in the description. Cameron Highlands is not like the rest of Malaysia. Depending on the season, the temperature can be as low as 14 Celsius degree during the day, and even colder during the night. So make sure you pack your clothes accordingly. We rented a scooter and it turns out to be one of the best decisions. The Highlands are connected by a two-lane road and during the peak season it can be very congested. So it will take forever to travel from point A to B, if you are lucky enough to get a taxi or a grab in the first place. Many times they simply just cancel the booking, the fare they charge is simply not worth their time to wait in a traffic jam. Therefore, riding a bike while all the cars are standstill is a smart idea. Unlike Kuala Lumpur, places here are closing early. Most of them shuts down around 5 pm and opens around 9 am, so you really have to push it through the day to get to all your desired locations, otherwise you might end up not seeing them. If you want to enjoy the moment, I would suggest to plan two or maybe three activities per day, so you can comfortably experience the beauty of Cameron Highlands. There are some locations in this area that are not recommended to approach by motorcycle, such as Flora Park, Mossy Forest, Big Red Strawberry Farm, and a few others of course, due to the fact that the hills are very very steep and of course slippery when wet. And let me tell you, roads get wet very often, especially here in the mountains. You must have a valid driver's license to rent a motorbike and you must wear a helmet at all times. There are two major populated areas in Cameron Highlands. The first one is Brinchang and the second one is Tanarata. This is where all the buses arrive from KL. And this is where we also witnessed a once in a lifetime Hindu festival but more on that later. We decided to travel by bus as well. In total, it was around a 4 hour ride from the central bus terminal in Kuala Lumpur. Tickets are very cheap, average around 35 to 40 ringgit per person. Take a note, most buses only stop once during the travel. So if you are a big fan of visiting the restroom in every 5 minutes, bus ride is maybe not for you. Brin Chang and Tanarata is only a 15 minutes drive away from each other. But don't let this confuse you, because Cameron Highlands is huge with a capital H. Let's say you want to travel from Brinchang to the famous Habitun village in Perak. Given the fact that you got lucky and found no traffic, you might can complete the travel in 52 minutes. But as usual, anything can happen in the mountains, so the 52 minute ride can easily be a 2 hour ride in a car. If you want to go to some locations, you must travel by the dedicated vehicle. For example, if you want to go to Flora Park, you cannot drive your own vehicle to the entrance, as it is too steep and also no parking spot is available. So instead, you have to stop by the nearby designated area, from where a 4x4 pickup truck will pick you up for free. Speaking of Flora Park, let's begin with this destination, as we enjoy this location the most. I always try to be honest and consistent to deliver nothing but the truth. As we go uphill, we can see nothing but a chaotic mess. Not the Instagram worthy places we all been promised. When I first seen it, I was actually started thinking if I got scammed. Luckily, the tides will turn as soon as we reach the main gates. From the very moment, everything is just like it has been promised. The number of flowers and gardens that surround the hills are mesmerizing. There are only two negatives that comes to my mind when visiting the park. First one, there's a lot of flies around the park, especially nearby the restaurant. And the second one is... Hey guys, we are just here at Cameron Flora Park at the Hobbit Houses. However, unfortunately, it turns out it's not available for everybody, at least not for free of charge. So instead, two to three person can go into this area and have a dinner perhaps for roughly 280 ringgit, which is quite pricey in my opinion. And they even put a lock on the door to prevent everybody just entering the place. It is what it is. Okay, to sum it up, this place is really picturesque and totally worth the 50 ringgit entry fee per person. However, it is not recommended for anyone with mobility issues as there are no wheelchair access there. Hi guys, we are here at Bo Tea Plantation Farm. Bo derived from the Chinese Bohia, which means precious happiness. This place became famous in the 1960s and 70s. Let's explore it together, shall we? Bo Tea Plantation. This place has an amazing marketing, attracting hordes of tourists. However, it was probably the biggest disappointment of all the places I visited so far. 
I really thought it would be like heaven, well, at least based on the videos I seen on the internet, but it was not. There were way too many tourists which completely ruined my experience. In reality, there's nothing really there, just a restaurant, a small shop and a small factory that you can finish touring in just 5 minutes. There's really nothing else you can do there. When we visited, there were no tour options around the plantation. Tea Farm Plantation is actually closed since COVID-19, so it's not allowed for the tourists. And beside us is the factory of the tea, and unfortunately, filming is not allowed inside, so I'm sorry guys. Usually, they would take you around in the area for a high fee of course, but at least you could see the plantation firsthand. I must give them the credit for offering a free tour and not charging an entry fee. If you visit their website, you can see everything they offer. Just a few buildings with a nice view. However, the hordes of tourists made it impossible to enjoy. At least the tea they serve as delicious. Hello everyone, we're here in the Big Red Strawberry Farm in Brenchang, Cameron Highlands. Cameron is 800 to 1,600 meters above sea level. Therefore, this region is optimal for growing crops, vegetables, flowers, and many more. Cameron Highlands is famous for its strawberry production, so visiting a strawberry farm is a must, and it's completely free of charge. It's a bit confusing, but the Big Red Strawberry Farm is just a section of the Cactus Valley. Surprisingly, it was a much more pleasant experience than Bo Tea Plantation. Similarly, there's no entry fee and the parking is also free. For a fee of 50 ringgit, you can pick your own strawberries up to half a kilogram. The flower garden is absolutely gorgeous, with plenty of different species. I think Stephanie enjoyed this the most. The restaurant and the store is quite decent, with a lot of options to choose from. The food is amazing, you must try it. She said I should buy this cowboy hat. What do you guys think? Leave it down in the comment section below. <laughs> Moving on, the night market in Brinchang is another place we wanted to visit. Shortly after the arrival, we run into this little guy. But don't worry, he's safe and sound after we rescued him. We didn't know what to expect, so we just decided to dive in the moment. There were plenty of gimmicks and a lot of locally grown crops, such as cactus and strawberries. In all quantities, of course. But we wanted something special, or rather, we were hungry for something. The market was relatively small, but we enjoyed our stay, thanks to the local gastronomy. To finish our three-day trip, we decided to visit Jim Thompson Tea House, which is actually the restaurant part of Cameron Highlands Resort, a very impressive and historical hotel located opposite of a golf course. Luckily, there's no dress code so anyone can enter the restaurant. It's a shame we didn't stay in this hotel because the restaurant was so impressive. To sum it up, if you think that Cameron Highlands is most resemble the area around Bo Tea Plantation, you are wrong. Only a small part of the region is devoted to tea bushes. Instead, you'll find numerous polytunnels and villages. Most people here work in the agriculture or tourism sector, so don't expect the glamour or Kuala Lumpur. During our travel, we encountered many stray dogs, so be cautious and keep your distance from them. Although, we didn't get a chance to go on a jungle hike, I recommend doing so with an experience guide. Don't forget to bring a mosquito repellent spray and wear long trousers and a long sleeve shirt or jacket. In summary, I would recommend Cameron Highlands to anyone without special mobility needs, who isn't bothered by the cold, rainy weather and simply want to escape the hustle and bustle of Kuala Lumpur for a week or two. Despite our short visit, we had an amazing time there. Oh, and before I forget, there's the Hindu festival I promised to tell you about.
Hey, could you just explain us what have we witnessed recently? It's actually a Taipu Sam. Taipu Sam, it's an yeah, Indian. Taipu Sam, it's a Hinduism festival. Hinduism festival, yes. okay. But wait a minute, it's uh, according to Google, it's in the 25th of January. So how come it's so late here? According to the lady that we spoke earlier, um, in Cameroon, they're quite late for the celebration. So they're quite far behind compared to other places like uh, Penang or Kuala yes, Lumpur. Exactly. Okay, so what do you think? Uh, why is this gentleman, the two gentlemen wearing this? I don't even know what should I call it. Kaudi. Kaudi. Yeah, the Kaudi. Like, Kaudi. Seems like, yeah, Kaudi. It seems like 10 kilos, according to the lady. Okay, 10 kilos. And they also have a piercing throughout their mouth, right? <laughs> so, so scary. So guys, that's it for today's video. And we gotta have to say goodbye to you. But before we do that, please don't forget to subscribe. If you haven't done it already, leave a like, leave a comment below and tell your thoughts about Cameron Flora Park. Until next time, bye-bye.